All right, last time we were here, we did part one of our video of our Starlink install. So this is part two. Uh, last time we set it up, we got it going, basic install, and just kind of set it out there on a table. We're gonna be installing this on the roof today to get it elevated. We got our ProxyCast 36 inch aluminum mast pole. If you saw our other video where we put up our Wi-Fi uh, blaster out to the shop uh, barn building, that was um, also proxy cast, but that was a little bit shorter pole. So now we're going to try the 36 inch. That was stainless steel. Now we're going to be doing aluminum. I think either one is good, but the Starlink is just not that heavy. So aluminum should be fine. So we're going to put this on and we're going to get this pole up here and get this mounted. In the past month and a half that we've been using it, we did use the snow melt feature during the snow here. So within 30 minutes the snow had melted so you can see an obvious difference from here's the first picture of when the snow was on it and here's the picture of when it was about five minutes of melt and then finally here's the picture of it just without the snow i, I can't put it in front of the current internet otherwise we'd lose internet right away uh, so i'm going to put it behind it but it's plenty tall and the Starlink is gonna sit on top anyway. I'm gonna try to install the adapter and the antenna on the ground on the pole. That way when I raise it up, it's already on there and then we'll just need to quickly uh, bolt the bottom in. Mm. Well, that did not come out easy. Snapped it in the middle there, trying to get that out. So let me tell you about this. This um, We ordered this on January 8th and it arrived here on the 5th. So nearly a month to get this order shipped and delivered here. All right, that is clearly the wrong angle. So we're gonna have to adjust this. Looking in the app, it, it recognizes it's misaligned. It says it's misaligned by 19 degrees. I'm curious what kind of performance we're getting even with it misaligned. I'm gonna run an advanced test here. So even with it misaligned, we're still getting 130 megabit per second down. That's dropping quickly to 89. So I was hoping I could use one of the preset holes on this. We're going to pull this one bolt out of the preset hole and move it to the choose your own angle hole. Okay, the adjustable angle bolts are going to go from the inside of the pole out. And we're going to put these hex washers on the outside. These are good for, uh, these are fitting 10 millimeter. Okay, now it says the angle, the tilt is incorrect by eight degrees, so we're gonna rotate it. I think it's just a matter of rotating it and not tilting it. It's not the tilt up and down. It's actually the north-south angle, so we're not pointed at north by seven degrees. That's all I have to move it, but we've already set the set screw on the pole, so now I gotta get a ladder, get up there and fine tune this sucker. Um, so let's go ahead and see what our performance is, though, before we do that, before we do our fine tuning. Okay, our status right now is we're left to right misaligned by seven degrees. We're getting 160 max down at 137 average, and we're getting 26 up. So when we fine tune this, I think by seven degrees, we should e get an even better performance. Um, so we'll be back with a better ladder to get up there to change that set screw. Okay, we're gonna spend a few minutes fine tuning this from seven degrees down to zero. In the box for the pole mount adapter that came from Starlink, they did provide 20 wire clamps for the ethernet cord. So we're gonna use two of them right now to clamp this to the building. And we're gonna kind of route this under the shingles and try to secure it a little bit better. All right, this next step is sort of optional. It depends on your setup. So what we're gonna do is we're going to switch over. We're gonna do bypass mode. In order to do that, we're gonna to go to Starlink, go to settings here and there's a choice between your router and Starlink antenna. Make sure you stay on the router inside and just scroll down to where it says bypass mode at the bottom. And now we have the option to slide to bypass. So for us, that makes sense because we've already got the current set up with our 
firewall and everything and another router. So what we're eliminating here is the Wi-Fi, additional Wi-Fi from this modem inside, which is a combined uh, modem, Wi-Fi, router, everything. And we're just gonna do bypass mode, which will strictly just bring the internet in and then our, our own system will take over. Right here is the ethernet that this blue line is going to our equipment. This is a power over ethernet adapter from the current provider antenna system. So I'm gonna unplug that from the LAN side. That'll be the cable that is going to our existing equipment. It's gonna go now to the Starlink modem. Now that we've done bypass mode, I should just be able to connect this ethernet to our system. I just need to remove this cover from the back here. That was super easy to remove. Okay, now that I've done the bypass mode, we are getting 234 megabits down which is double what we had before, right? Before we were only 100 max. Well, that's the most we could get here. Um, long story short, they couldn't go any higher, faster speeds for us unless we put up a tower. Uh, so we would have had to put up a tower to get a, a better signal. I guess I assumed that our equipment would recapture an IP address. Um, our current firewall, which was holding on to an old IP, would not let go. Um, so just switching that off um, and then turn it back on. Actually, in our case, I set it to be bridge mode, which bridged it to our current network, and then I set it back to addressed, which caused it to basically restart the, the internet connection to Starlink. Okay, let's talk through a few points of the experience of installing this and the experience of Starlink. Number one, obstructions. Before you order Starlink, get the app, go through the obstructions view, See if you have any obstructions with the caveat that that app will show you obstructions that may not be a problem later. At least in my experience, the obstructions were not as bad as the app told me after getting Starlink, setting it up, uh, also running a software update. I think it pulled down the IPs for more satellites and it knows where they are. So the obstructions weren't nearly as bad as I thought they were gonna be and we were able to put it here instead of further away with a longer cable where there would be even fewer obstructions. We're gonna take down one tree in the future probably which is, is obstructing it very, ever so slightly but the app says now that we, we have an unobstructed view of the sky even though there is a tiny bit of red on the edge. Number two, weather. Don't worry about the weather too much. Uh, in our experience, it hasn't really affected it. Cloudy skies, we have performance speed. Uh, rain, we still had good performance snow we have performance and the snow melt feature will take the snow off of your antenna anyway if you turn it on number three reliability i'd say it's reliable your speed can vary during the day anywhere for for us it was anywhere between 30 to, to 160 up to 200 those speeds just go back and forth all day also for reliability after you set it up you can check your outages your outages will be listed for you under statistics so if you look at outages you'll see how many times and it does go in and out but usually it's stuff that's just not noticeable you know either nobody's doing anything it comes right back and you, you, all, all of your stuff just continues uh, i don't know if that will vary based on your own setup but for us it's been pretty good furthermore when you have outages you can look at them in the logs and we have only had two that really were noticeable to us. There was a, a one second outage, which resulted in 30 seconds of downtime. Another one, which was 15 second outage, which resulted in ex exactly that, 15 seconds noticeable uh, outage time on the computer. Perhaps after we remove the, the tree that's creating obstacles at this point, that'll, that'll be eliminated also. Number four, the router bypass mode. It did work uh, on the second try. So the first try, I did router bypass on a rainy day and I had to reboot that sucker like 10 times, uh, pull the power plug out of the, the router, plug it back in, 10 times that day. Then on the second day, I switched the ethernet from the one port to the other, and I've had no issues. So I don't know if there's a faulty port on the router or it just has to, to do with the fact that I, the second day I started from scratch, I did a factory reset on everything and did the router bypass mode again and it worked fine. So those two things in conjunction, if you have problems with router bypass mode, just try that. That second day, the rain was just as bad if, as the first day, if not worse, and everything worked fine. So I don't think it was the weather. And finally, number five, putting up the, the antenna on the mast. Probably, unless you're confident, don't do it the way I did it, where I put the antenna on the mast and then took them both up the ladder with me. That's fine if, if you have confidence in that, um, but it is a little heavy after about 30 seconds of holding it in the air above your head and trying to put the bolt in. 
I will probably come back with some Loctite on these bolts and put that on and kind of tighten those down again. And I probably will come back and put a harness, a wire harness, just in case it ever does fall. A gale comes through, you know, the wind knocks it off. The, the wire will catch it, it'll only fall one or two feet and it won't fall 10 feet. Stability is good with the aluminum with a 36 inch mast. I don't see a problem. I probably would have preferred it to be steel. Uh, when set, turning that set screw, I did notice some flex in the aluminum. Getting it on the pole was not too bad. Now the fine tuning alignment, that did take some time. You're just gonna have to fiddle with it, hold the phone in one hand, gently turn the antenna with the other. Now you do have three degrees of freedom. You have the pitch, the roll, and the yaw. You do need to get those pretty much right. Uh, it can be off slightly and Starlink will cope, but you do need to get it approximately where the, the box shows you. And, and you can turn it to see that box in the three degrees of freedom where you can see whether you're, you need to do more pitch, roll, or yaw. All right, if you're in the city or the country, I hope this helps you. And don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe. We'll see you next time on Homestead, y'all.